post and hopefully they shall come. I think I'm gonna start doing eight o'clock. I've gotten some feedback and people are saying eight is definitely better. Um, I forget that on Wednesday, people go to service. So I don't want to, you know, inject my life in their life. So, hey, there's my little moderator. Here, let me make you a moderator. Give me one second, T-Pain. Add moderator and confirm. There you go. Hi, hockey mom. How's everybody doing? If you're just joining the room, happy Wednesday to you. If you're a part of the Chubby Girl Challenge, and um, I don't know, we're gonna call it, we're gonna call ourselves the Chubettes, right? Because like I was a majorette in high school, and this is for 40 and over. So if you don't know, you don't know. So how's everybody doing? I'm probably more nervous tonight than I think I've ever been, and I don't even know why. I don't know what that looks like. Um, and, we'll, and we're going to talk about it. Like, I had a really crappy day, right? And so this is where people become human, right? And share their real stories. If you're in the room, if you can share the live just to, you know, your people. Hi, love. How are you? How are you? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a little not negativity today, but a little realistic discussion. I have been doing tons and tons of research today. Um, I Actually, this is my, well, it's kind of my day off. So... I work overnight, so I go in at midnight and I get off about 10 o'clock in the morning. And um, I laid down for about, I don't know, five hours. And the more I sat there while tried to sleep, it started going through my head. Like, you know, like, um, uh, hi, Sabrina, how are you? Glad you're here. Glad you're here, dear. Um, so anyway, um, I started to sit and think about this. Like it's, it's been going through my, my mind. Fran's coming behind y'all, sorry. And the more I thought about it and the more, you know, it weighed on my heart. So I kind of wanted to talk about diet culture today. I did, like, when I tell you I did some research, I did some research. I got some facts for y'all, um, some real facts and um, some places you can go look up the information. Because, again, I'm just a chubby Italian girl from North Carolina just trying to live her best life, sharing her story, going through menopause. Um, for those of you who are over 40, you know what that feels like um, to be in perimenopause, postmenopause, or um, to be in, um, menopause full blown. And if you do, please click the room, um, cause you're in the right place, right? This is the sisterhood of the chubby girl challenge. We are the chubbats. I'm, I'm, I'm coining that now. I'm coining that statement. The chubbats. Never thought I'd be so happy to be chubby in my life. I'm not going to lie to you. And I'll tell you why the energy, the energy that is in North Carolina, Kathy, uh -oh, the people and to my Michigan people, whoo, to the youpers in the room it's kind of funny like my family and my friends think this is all a little bit cray cray um because they don't really know a lot about tiktok and they're kind of like mm, i don't get it your video had 2.2 million views like what's that like what does that mean i'm like well it means my little chubby ass like kind of went viral i'm kind of proud of that now not only me i got a crew of women i got some chubbettes with me and it's kind of like a better thing right so anyway i said all that to say this um, again, if you're in the room and you're part of the Chubby Girl Challenge and you're not ashamed to shout your name, um, can I get a, what city or what state you're from? Okay. Can I get a state in the room? You don't have to say the city because it's nobody's damn business where you live. My kids say I tell my business all the time. So anyway, we got 270 people here. So we're just going to jump right into the topic, right? Um, on Friday night, I'm not going to be on tomorrow night. Why are you not going to be on tomorrow night, Mel? Because tomorrow night, my ladies and I are going to hang out. Um, those of you who are in the Chubby Girl Challenge, all 3,000 of you, I don't really know how this works. I'm going to figure it out. We'll figure it out together. Um, we are going to have a Facebook meeting where you can come up and I can have 20 people up and we can talk and we're going to have a panel. It's going to be pretty cool. We're going to share some some of our stories, right? Like what we've been through. Give people a couple minutes on their platform, let them come down. If you don't want to share, you don't have to share. Um, but again, I'm super excited to have all of you ladies there. Um, I know some people have written to me and be like, can men do this? Uh, men can do it, but you don't have menopause. You don't, you're not over 40. You didn't give birth. Like I, I don't, can't speak to the male experience. Um, I can't speak to people underneath, under the age of 40. Cause I'm not 19 years old anymore. Um, and I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a nurse. And I have to continue to say that. Like I, 
I love each and every one of you who wants the input and who wants to like get like my thoughts and opinions, but that takes me back to diet culture. That takes me back to this thought process that we have all ingrained in our heads that I can't lose weight. I can't take care of myself unless someone tells me how to do it. I, I don't know how to um, advocate for myself, right? Like, unless someone tells me how to do it. I don't know when how much water I should drink unless someone tells me how to do it. Who the hell am I? Again, I am just some little chubby Italian girl. Well, not little or I wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, but I am some chubby girl from North Carolina who decided to make a video exactly a week ago, y'all. So if you're just joining me... Um, a week ago, I made a video about how I lost 27 pounds in seven weeks. Um, I did weigh in. Today is my weigh in day. So now I'm at 30 pounds loss in eight weeks. And what works for me might not work for you. This doesn't mean that everybody um, looking for nice. Michelle, Michelle, um, good to have you. Um, I'm struggling too. And that's kind of why I want to start today is um, I woke up this morning my stomach was bloated. My back, those of you who know, um, I have a ovarian cyst that burst a couple weeks ago and I made, I made a video about it and um, I've had some back stuff from, you know, thanks to my ex-husband. Uh, that's another story for another day. The first ex-husband uh, broke my tailbone. No, I don't care. I'll say it publicly. I mean, there's court records. It's not like there's uh, it's a make-believe story. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, I woke up this morning and I was, it was bad. Like, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was like, ha like, so today is the one week anniversary that I made this video. And I thought, well, if a couple hundred people see this, if I help anybody, it's going to, it's going to be worth it. Right. Cause that's what I want to do. Cause everybody gatekeeps this, right. Everybody, um, gatekeeps protein and gate gatekeeps. Like what are the things you can do to feel better? And, um, so I woke up this morning and the minute I get out of bed, just so everybody knows, I don't know if this is breaking my fast, but to be honest with you, I don't give a shit. Like this is what I do when I get out of bed. So I'm not hungry all morning. I literally take an entire bottle of water and I take my probiotic. And again, everybody's asking me, do you take three of these? If you take three, listen, this is not a laxative, but it's going to take a few days to kick in. But when you kick this in, if you're doing three a day, my friend, the dam is going to break. And when the dam breaks, let me tell you something. Also to my friends who are like, Mel, I'm peeing all day long. Like I'm in the bathroom. Like I live in the bathroom. That's because you're dehydrated, my friend. You don't even know because, as a matter of fact, I'm thirsty. You're dehydrated. You might think you're not dehydrated. You might be like, well, I drink like two bottles of water a day. You are dehydrated, my love, because if you weren't, you wouldn't be in the bathroom 24-7. So and anyway, let's continue on. I'll field questions in a minute. Feel free to talk in the room though amongst yourself. So as I was saying, I woke up this morning and I sat on the edge of my bed and I started to cry. Um, that's not a laxative. That is a probiotic, as I was saying. I said it is not a laxative. Thank you. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, and by the way, the moderators in the room, moderator, can you say hi to the people? Moderator, moderator, and then I'm going to get into the story this morning that got me here. Moderator in the room. If you're in the room, if you like the room, again, see see that right there? Totally tea leaf. That's my baby. Um, that's the daughter that did the art behind me, you know, the one I talk about all the time. Um, that's my girl. That's my daughter. Um, the one who designed the t-shirts for the swag that we're going to be giving away this Sunday, the first official swag bag. I'm actually thinking of doing two of them. Um, just so you know, um, if you're in the room and, you know, you do decide to throw something in there, I don't even know how it works. Like if you put like a coin in the room or you give me like, I think there's like fire bursts or something, I'm taking all that money and I'm going to put that into the swag bags. Um, the first couple swag bags I made, I don't know, like how would you estimate the value, but they got some fun stuff. They got some probiotics. They got a personalized message from me. There's a t-shirt in there. There's just like some, some good stuff, right? Um, and just so you know, um, I am, I am currently, uh, I am currently, uh, waiting for the swag to come in. If you're interested in chubby girl swag, uh, Kiki, my, oh, I said her name again, totally tea leaf in the room actually created on her Etsy page. So if you go up to my link in my bio, <clears throat> this is my same, my shameless pl plug. 
Um, I think I've had 11 hours sleep this week, so I think I can have a plug every now and then, right? So um, you go up there, my Etsy is in there, my Amazon storefront, if you're looking for the probiotic, if you're looking for great protein, if you're looking for skinny syrups, any of that stuff is up there. Um, but yeah, feel free, please go to Totally Tea Leafs page and follow her. Um, she's only got a few hundred followers and she's really trying to launch out her art um, and so uh, there's my daughter plug, sorry. Um, but anyway, back to the story. So I woke up this morning. This is one week ago today. I was, so one week ago today, I woke up and I was just a regular Italian chubby woman. And when I got on the scale, cause it's my weigh-in day, I decided that, you know what? I hit 27 pounds lost in seven weeks. And I was like, you know what? There's something to this shit. There's literally something to this shit. And they have created, or we have been told these stories. It's kind of like being told about Santa and the Easter bunny. And then your parents come along all those years later and they look at you and say, just kidding, there was no Santa. I don't know about y'all. Uh, and there's no kids under the age of 18 in here. I have them all blocked. But do you remember that day when you heard that? I only weigh in every two weeks. We're gonna talk about that in a second because I got people on here. I love you guys. And I know y'all just kind of couldn't help it. And people are giving me like, Mel, I started it last Friday. I didn't even wait till Monday for you. And like, this is almost a week and I'm already down four pounds and I feel so good and blah, blah, blah. But do the My360 scan. It's called My360. And I suggest scanning your body. But let me go back to the story at hand. So woke up this morning, week ago today, I was just your average uh, woman living in North Carolina with not a lot of friends because my friends are all in upper Michigan. Have a couple of friends because I work virtually, but not, I didn't have people. And the funny thing about it is I was telling my daughter the other day, Kiki, when we were riding in the car getting our protein, our coffee at Starbucks and adding our protein together, um, I started to cry and I told her, I said, you know, do you think I have a nice personality? And she's like, of course I do. Of course you do, mom. Of course she's my kid. So what is she going to say, right? And um, I said, I don't feel like I have a place. And she said, what do you mean? Hi, hi, Nancy. Hi, Nurse Nancy. And I said, um, I really don't feel like I have a place in this world. And she's like, well, what are you talking about, mom? And I said, I just don't feel like I have a spot. Like I know I'm over, I know I'm outspoken. I know that like I'm an advocate for people I, and I don't do it because I want anything in return. I'm not codependent. I was codependent one time in my life, but then I learned somewhere along the line, if you're doing things for people and expecting something to come back, shit, you shouldn't be doing it, right? And that's one of the things that we as women do because we're caretakers. You know, hey, I gave birth to you, which I do do that to Kiki sometimes, but you know, we all we all slip, right? So anyway, normal girl, no people, no like real place, like, right? Um, and so I've been trying to find my spot in the world and I have prayed about it. And again, I don't, I don't judge anybody by their belief system. I don't expect anybody to judge me by mine. And if you do, you can't come to the roller rink with us. So if you know, you know. Um, and, and I'll go back to that because, you know, in eighth grade, you go to the roller rink with your girlfriends and, you know, they'd bring that random cousin or random friend from out of town. You'd be like, who's this? Like, who's she? And then she'd be like a little uppity or whatever and be like, you know, why y'all got pins on your jean jackets? Well, why are you here at the roller rink with us? Because you ain't even invited. So you, you can't sit at our lunch table. So anyway, so I didn't have people at my lunch table. So I woke up. Uh, I cried that morning. And I literally got on my knees by my bed. I've been really sick. I could barely stand up. And I said, I don't know what my purpose is. <laughs> this is where I, I, I cry. This is, this is the stupid, like, this is the hormone. Sorry. And I began to cry. And I said, you know, God, like, I don't get it. Like, I'm 52 years old. I'm divorced. I think I'm a good mother. I've raised three beautiful daughters. Very successful um, in everything that each one of them are doing. And I, I work. I, I work on a crisis line um, as a supervisor. I try to do right by my counselors and by the people that I serve. I'm a servant leader. I don't think because I have a title that I am something above anybody. Um, and so I, I try to pre approach my work life like that. Um, but I didn't have, I don't have a place, right? And so that morning I got a little fired up as we talked and we went around and I said, you know, I just want someone else to know that it is okay not to worry about calories anymore, that it's okay not to like live by the scale, that it is okay 
that even though you're over 40 and you're doing everything in the world to cut the weight and you're, I mean, I was eating 14 to 1500 calories a day and I was 300, well, I was going between 327 and 330 pounds. Like that was, I couldn't get past 300. Like I just couldn't. And I don't care if y'all know, it's not like you can't look at me and see that I have an issue with weight, right? And so I sat there and I prayed to God and I said, you know, I'm just going to tell it like, fuck it. I'm going to tell it, you know what I mean? And probably nobody's going to listen, but that's okay. And so I put up my video and, um, that afternoon, cause like I said, I'm off on Wednesdays. I stayed up all morning. I finally fell asleep and my youngest totally tea leaf comes in the room and she says, mom, I said, what? have you seen TikTok? And I was like, oh God, what's on TikTok now? Like, what, what are we looking at? What dance are we going to do? What are, what's going on? And I said, um, you know, what, what am I looking at? And she said, mom, um, your video has got 195,000 views. And I was like, what? Like, what? Like, okay, this, this can't be like something for real, like for real. Cause I, I'm fat. Like, let's just keep it real. Like, let's talk about it for real. I'm a big girl. I'm still a big girl. I've got a long road to travel. You know, like, I'm not these women who are like, uh, 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 and then they go off screen, right? And they go off screen, they go off screen, and then they come back on screen, and then they look like this. I'm not her. I'm not her. I'm still this. You know what I mean? Like uh, the struggle is real over here in North Carolina. You know what I mean? Like, so I woke up this morning last week. I say it launched the video. Kiki's like, you know, and it blew up. Like, did I ever expect in a million years? Now, let me tell you all a little bit about my background. I'm a licensed counselor, addictions counselor, used to be licensed, let my licensure go because I went into a different field. I worked as a counselor for eight years, setting up methadone clinics in North Carolina, helping people with addiction. And people used to say to me, they come in and be like, I'm addicted to blah, blah, blah. But you don't know what the hell I'm talking about because you don't look like you've ever done anything in my life. And I would sit and look at these people and I'd be like, mm-hmm. So I, I've never done anything. I don't, I don't know anything about addiction, right? Because I, I might not have used injection. I might not have put something out here. But guess what? Every time I pick up a piece of food, every time I decide what I'm going to eat, I'm an addict. I am a food addict. And I can admit that. I can, I can say it out loud. I can finally own it at 52 years old. I am addicted to food. I use food when I am sad. I use food when I am mad. I use food when I am, it's a comfort. And I taught my daughters that. I'm Italian, so I taught my girls like, oh, you did good. Great job. You got an A. Let's go get ice cream. Let's go on a ride and get ice cream tonight. Hey, great job. Mom baked you a cake. I'm probably the best cook. Not the best cook, but I'd say like I'm pretty damn good. Like I make the best pan of lasagna about that thick um, in the summertime. We'll grill chicken, right? We'll put some chicken on the grill. But you know what I make with that? I make twice baked potato salad with two pounds of bacon in it with five packs of cheese. I make some macaroni and cheese. I make macaroni and cheese and make you slap your mother-in-law right like that in her mouth, like for real, like on, on everything. So I can cook. I've had people come to my house of every race, creed and color and be like, what? Like what? So I love to cook, right? And so, and I don't know how to cook skinny. Oh, wow, you know how to cook skinny, right? Like I cannot give you my lasagna recipe. My grandmother would turn over in the grave, fly down from heaven and she would be upside my head. She'd be like, have you lost your damn mind giving people my sauce recipe? And my grandma used to call it red sauce. She, My grandma mama would snap. She would come back and I, that'd be it. She'd kick my ass from here to the moon because I give the family recipe away. I can give a little things, but not that. So um, anyway, I said all that to come over here to this morning. And I woke up this morning and I'm going to tell y'all, I feel overwhelmed just a little bit. I am trying my best because I'm a caretaker of people. I am trying in our group, um, the Facebook group is the Chubby Girl Challenge. If you're not in there, we started on Monday, but it doesn't matter when you start because what, I th don't think people realize this doesn't end in 21 days. We are launching this shit now and it takes 21 days to change a behavior. Okay. And, and that's what we're going to talk about is diet culture. So I woke up this morning and I cried. Like I literally sat in my bed and I was like, A, this is the negative thinking. I don't feel like I deserve this. Like I don't deserve 3,000 women to support me. I don't deserve that. Like who the hell am I? Like, like this is a lot. Like I'm taking out a lot. You know what I mean? And how do I 
be a good friend. You know, I say, hey, bestie, which I really mean. Like, how am I a friend to all these women who are taking their life minutes and sharing them with me, who are messaging me and texting me? And I'm trying so hard to answer everybody and trying so hard to share my time with people, but I'm also working 50 hours a week. And so I'm trying to find a balance right now. Um, And so um, again, I don't monetize anything. That's the other thing that really like hurts my heart. My daughter's decided, I gotta get a drink. My daughter's decided it would be fun to have like swag, right? Like, cause my, my girls are all about this, like this, this changing the culture, changing the diet culture. How do we as women? And so I used to tell them like, you know, in high school we had t-shirts and we had like pins on our shirt and we shared friendship pins. And those of you who are older know what the hell I'm talking about. We had true connections with each other as women. We had each other's back. We were riders. We went out together as girls. Let a boy talk to my girlfriend, like, or want to, or try to talk to me. You know, like my girlfriends in high school were Candy, Kelly, Stephanie, and Patty. This was my crew, right? Let a motherfucker try to talk to Patty after he talked to Stephanie. We It going down up in Upper Michigan. Like, we don't do that stuff. We don't sleep with each other's husbands. We don't take each other's boyfriends. Like, those are the kind of women we are. Those are our 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s babies, okay? I don't know what happened to the MFers behind us. And I'm not saying that to everybody in here because my daughter's 25. She's got some integrity. But here's the thing, right? it's a different level of thought process. So so here we are now we're going through menopause and we're doing this together, right? But at the same time, the struggle is real. So I woke up this morning, I sat next to my bed and I cried and I thought, what the hell, what am I doing? Like, who am I? Like, how can I do this and like do right by people? And like I said, I got a message from someone about the Etsy page, like a really ugly message talking about, you know, like you're making money off of us. I want to be like, bitch, please. Like, are you serious? Like, I could, I have 3,000 people. I'm just going to keep it 100. I have 3,000 members in that room. If I even would have charged $5 a person to come in and to share the knowledge with, what what's the math? I don't freaking know. Someone do the math. He was a mathematician. 3,000 people, $5. Is that like $15,000? Is that right? Because I can't really add right now. Is that, is that it? 15? I don't know. Freaking I can't add. Whatever it is, it's a lot of fucking money, right? So I, I'm not these people on here trying to take your money, telling you to buy a patch from me, buy my book from me. You need to buy this from me. You need to give me your email address so I can resell it. No, I'm not doing that, right? I am a normal woman who's over here paying her $500 light bill and, you know, doing research and I'm on my cell phone in my house, you know? That's it. And I'm not trying to say I'm better than anybody else, but damn, give me a break for a second. So I got up out of bed. I was very upset. I knew it was weigh-in day. I felt my stomach felt bloated. I think I'm about to start my freaking cycle because, you know, whoever Eve was in my family, she freaking made a freaking apple pie and freaking apple cider and freaking served um, Adam some applesauce because I started my cycle when I was nine. I'm 52, about to be 53 in November. And she just come in every month like, what's up, girlfriend? What's up? I'm like, bitch, I thought you were going to be gone by like 48. Like, what are you doing here? I don't know what y'all used to call your cycle, but we used to call her Kathy because Kathy Rigby, is that her name? The little gymnast lady. And we'd have to say that because the boys would be like, you on your cycle? You on your period? Like it was something like taboo, right? Again, the misconception of our, of our thing, right? And And so that brings me to today's topic, right? And the thing that got us all here. So as I got out of bed this morning, feeling sorry for myself, like crying, like, okay, Mel, get out of your feelings, wipe your eyes, wash your face, pull your hair up, let's go. And so I picked up my phone and I was, I was, I'm not even lying to you, I was on the toilet. Like, I don't know if y'all do that, but I do that. And I'm sitting on the toilet chilling. It's up in my bio. If you want to join the group, it is up in my bio. All you have to do is clink, Click on the link tree and it's got chubby girl challenge. You can join for free. Um, so anyway, so I'm sitting in there and I'm on the toilet and Kiki and my other daughter is walking around the house and we're just kind of talking and I'm like sitting there reading it and I open this lady's story and I'm not going to say her name because of anonymity and I don't, you know, that that's the kind of girl I am. You can tell me a secret and I'm not telling shit. So um, I'm, I'm not telling her business like that, but she went ahead and she added me and she said um she said at melissa she said um 
I just want to really quickly share my story with you. I am 54 years old and I have not slept in six years. I don't know what happened six years ago, but I do not know what it feels like to sleep overnight. Last Wednesday, by the grace of God or whatever, I was on your page and I happened to catch your energy and I liked it. So I joined this group. I don't join groups. And I started the magnesium like you told me. And I started the probiotics like you told me. And I'm trying to increase my protein every day because we don't, it, it's a, we're all a work in progress, right? Um, we have to grant ourselves grace and forgiveness as we are trying to get to our goals. And this person said to me, if I hadn't met you, I wouldn't know what it felt like to sleep through the night. I've only been on the Medicaid, on the vitamins for five days. And last night I went to bed and I didn't wake up. I woke up and I had to go to the bathroom. But when I went to the bathroom, normally it takes me like 45 minutes to an hour to go um, back to sleep. But you know what I did? I got back in my bed. I cuddled in my bed and I fell asleep. Not only that, I slept through the night all the way up. My alarm clock had to wake me up. This is the first time in six years my alarm clock my alarm clock beat me. Hey, Jay, how are you, my friend? Jay and I go way back. You want to follow a sexy, strong, amazing man who just is really good person. Jay's the one. But anyway, um, so said to me that, you know, I slept through the night. And because of you, I slept to my alarm. And for the first time in six years, I, and I don't care if I don't lose weight. I think they're going like on a trip to Hawaii. This is the person I'm calling out. They said, I'm supposed to be going in seven weeks on a trip to Hawaii. And you know what, Mel? I don't even care if I don't lose the 27 pounds like you did. You gave me back sleep. What? Like what? And then I went on and read and people were like, and someone else was like, Mel, don't kill me. But I got on my scale today. <laughs> I ain't even mad at you, right? Because I get it because it's so ingrained in our heads, right? Down to 2.9 pounds in four days. Like Mel... I'm using the bathroom, like I'm sleeping, like this, I can't believe all I had to do is eat protein. I'm not even worrying about calories right now. And that's it. And that's what we're here to talk about, right? So we as a group and a society, and this is where I need you to like the room right now and share it. Not for any other reason, but every woman that you know that's 40 and over, every woman that's going through perimenopause, postmenopause, or menopause needs to hear this right now. I don't care what anyone says. If I have to stand on a mountain, if I, I told my daughter today, I'm going to, I'm going to quit my job and go to every city and just stand in a park and tell women that are over the age of 40, you need these things in your life and life will be different for you. I am not a doctor. I am not a nurse. I am just a chubby woman in North Carolina who might have found the key to the secret, right? And maybe I didn't even figure it out. Maybe everybody else did, but maybe this is time I started to listen and I listened to these things and they worked, right? Because I'm sick of dieting. I'm sick of counting carbs. I'm sick of someone telling me what the hell I can eat, when I want to eat it, and what I should put in my mouth. I am a grown-ass woman. I am 52 years old. I have a mother in Upper Michigan, a father who passed away from COVID last year, but not a motherfucker in this world is going to tell me what to put in my mouth. Excuse my French. I'm not supposed to swear. But with that being said... I want to talk about diet culture. What's diet culture? Mel, you're probably like, what is that term? Diet culture, and I got it written down here, is a social expectation that tells us as women, that tells us, not men, not anybody else, us as women, right? That social expectation that tells us as women how we should eat, what you're allowed to put in your damn mouth, and what how you should look. Negative ghost rider, who the hell are you? Do you pay bills in my house? Do you sleep with me in my bed at night? I don't think you do. So how the hell are you going to tell me? Then again, and I'm not trying to be mean or funny or anything, but how is a 110 pound woman going to tell my fat ass like what to do and how to diet? How is a man who has never been through menopause, who, who, who invented the scale, thanks for inventing the scale, my friend, whoever you are, I'm going to call him Billy because every, every man that is in a story of mine, I call him Billy. So Billy invented the fucking scale, put us on it. Now we can't walk through the day or measure our life without doing it on a scale, without having a scale tell us our self-worth, right? So diet culture... Not only did that, okay, I'm going to tell you what diet culture looks like. It, diet culture is discussing calories and telling us if they're good or bad. 
Who the hell are you to tell me what's good or bad? Who the hell are you to tell me that if I fasted for 14 hours all night, I woke up that morning, happy woman's day. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's take a second. We'll go back to diet culture number one a second. Can I get a heart? Can I get a whoop whoop? Women's Day. We are celebrating each other, damn it. This is Women's Day. We are taking back our bodies. We are taking back our lives. And we are taking back our thought process. We are going to break this diet culture like nobody else ever has. That's what we're going to do. We're going to show everybody else. We're going to show these younger girls that when they get up here, this is how we're going to do it, right? And so back to number one. They taught us disgusting calories and calling them good or bad. Who the hell are you to tell me what's good or bad? I get it. What's in food, right? But it's in moderation, right? We're going to take our health back. Thank you very much. Number two, number two, our diet culture taught us that we comment adult people commenting about the size and shape of children. I want you to, I want you to absorb that for a second. I want you to think about when you were at your children's play or dance recital or soccer game or whatever. I was always the biggest girl. So I know what that looks like, right? But think about that for a second when the people next to you, especially if you have a child that's overweight or that's thicker or, you know, doesn't look to the social norm, right? And you hear them like, look at that girl over there on the end. Like she's a little big to be a cheerleader. Who the F are you to talk about a child? Who are you to already put that on a baby, right? That's a damn baby. Who the hell are you to tell a child they don't look right, shape, size, or anything? That, that is, that's diet culture, right? We were taught that, right? Like, you brought that girl home to me, honey? Son, she's a little thick. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? Like that. And we do that as women to each other, right? We judge each other. We talk shit about each other. We're like, mm, look at her in that dress. Like, why her tummy hanging out? Like, what? Like, we're supposed to be like... Way to go, girl. You know what? Put that sports top on and walk through Target. Fuck them. They don't like it. Tell them to close their damn eyes, right? That This is America. We're supposed to be able to wear anything we want to, right? You can't judge me based upon what I decided to wear today because guess what? Again, you don't pay the bills in my house. Number three, right? Um, we had lessons in health class. Now, listen to this one. We had lessons in health class. Remember we had to go to health class? Those of us, we, we called it home ec. We didn't call it health class. That's some other shit right there, right? But they emphasized and told us, remember, smaller meals equal healthy. Starve yourself equals healthy. The less calories you eat equal healthy. You know what? That's not it. This is not one dimensional. You can't just eat. You can't look at watch. You can't just eat 1500 calories a day and walk 800 steps a day and never drink water and don't take any vitamins and expect expect uh, expect to lose weight let you soak on that one for a second how do you know Mel let me tell you how I know because for the last four years I have eaten under 1500 calories a day did not get up and move. I did not drink water. I did not take a probiotic. I did not take magnesium. I didn't take anything. And then I sat there every week and got on the scale and was like, did I lose? No, I'm still 330. Oh, did I lose? I lost two pounds. Oh, because that was water weight. Okay, then I weighed in again. Now I'm, now I'm 333. Like, I'm hysterical. Like, I gained 50-some pounds during COVID. Like, I, I was always like 260, 270, never this big. But guess what? Here comes menopause, like my ex-husband, just to ruin the world. Mm -hmm. Let's go to number four, right? Number four. Diets. Now watch this. Now, now I'm, I'm going to get a witness in here. I'm taking you to church on this one. Diets that promote health by cutting out food groups. Listen to that for a second. And I know there's a lot of you counting carbs, counting calories, not eating protein, don't eat fat, do da 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 because they said don't do this. But if you don't do that, that's not how this works. Okay, let me explain that to you. That is not how this works. You can't cut out anything. We are a creature... Okay, this is why Alcoholics Anonymous does not work. And I'm sorry if I hurt someone's feelings, but Google it. Alcoholics Anonymous has a 1% success rate because it's based upon abstinence, right? So that's why it does not work, right? So diets, diets that tell us like you can't eat this food group, you can't eat that food group, you can't do this, you got to do that. That is not a lifestyle change. That is a setup for motherfucking failure. Excuse my language. If profanity offends you, then Mel offends you and we're probably not going to be friends. I am so sorry. I believe in God, but nowhere in the Bible does it say fuck. So sorry, I apologize. But with that being said, right, with that being said, they, they said, you know, in order to be healthy, you have to cut out this. In order to be healthy, you have to be, but let's talk about one of these bodies 
bodybuilders, right? Some of the most healthiest people out there, right? Some of the health, and, and how do they cut weight? They eat protein, 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 and they have fats and they have a nice balance of carbs in there, you know, and that's what they do. And they do it like that. And then they just shed all this weight and then they go to a competition and they eat like 3000 calories a day. Meanwhile, my fat ass over there with one piece of broccoli, a half a piece of carrot and an onion, that's my dinner. That's it because you know, I'm fat and I got to lose weight. But here this person is eating 3,000 calories with a big heaping plate of chicken, drinking their protein shakes, you know, living their best life, and I'm starving to death. That don't work. Like, think about that for a second. That, don't, that doesn't make sense. One plus one does not equal two. Yet we buy into the bullshit, right? Yet we think like, okay, well, it got to be right because, you know, this person told me that. Like, all my girlfriends are, are in here putting this patch on their arm. All my friends are taking these pills that cost $300 to join, right? All of this, like, just to have friends and to be in a group of women. Fuck that. The day I pay for my friends is the day hell freezes over, right? That's it, right? There's enough women out there who would like to chill with me and I would like to chill with them. I will not pay for someone's friendship. I will not do that. I will not do that. Number five, right? Right? The number five, who is the biggest um, diet culture creator? If anyone knows in the room, please put it in the room. Who is the biggest diet culture creator? That's motherfucking social media, right? Social media, 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 media has told us and glorified healthy people. Healthy people are not 103 pounds and starve themselves. Like I love the Kardashians. Like I absolutely think those women are great people because they're women, right? Everybody brings something to the table. But damn, Chloe, you were like my idol at one point in time. Come on, Chloe, you were the chubby sister. You were the pretty sister. You were the sister that I was like, yeah, you know, I could be a Kardashian one day too because look at Chloe. Not now, right? Because she conformed to society's diet culture, right? She, In order to feel like she was something, she said, I got to cut all this weight and I got to become super skinny, not because you're healthy, but because you're sisters all look that way right so that's that's what I'm saying so I, I came all there to say this right I came there to say this we have got to stop being a part of the diet culture right and the one thing that I saw in the room today now I'm going to tie it back to our, our challenge as I read through comments and I was really really excited about like all these wins I saw this negative thought process as people posted. And I love each and every woman out there who took and was vulnerable enough to share with us where they're at, right? And I, one sticks out to me the most. I messed up today. And as I went on and read, I, they said, I messed up today. I broke down and ate a piece of lemon cake. What? You messed up today because you had a piece of lemon cake? What the actual fuck? And I wanted to be like, I wanted to go through my computer and hug her. I wanted to go through my computer and say, whoever told you in life, you can't have a piece of damn cake, man. Like whoever taught us that it's not okay to decide like you want something sweet. Like what the hell is this? This is a lifestyle change. If you are here for a diet you're in the wrong place. If you think I'm going to give you a diet, this is not about a diet. This is about a lifestyle change. This is about changing your thought process. This is why Saturday, when you enter for the swag bag, you're not going to be entered if you put your weight up there. I don't care about your weight. The, it's going to be about calling out one positive behavior, one positive change you made in the last week with you. But that's not what's going to get you a swag bag. What's going to get you a swag bag is I ate my protein this week. I, I went ahead and I walked for the first time a mile in, in six years. These are my wins. I want to know your wins. I don't want to know. I don't want We don't want to know. Like the, the, We don't judge you by your, your scale. That's not what we do here. That, that is not the chubby girl mentality. That is not our lifestyle. And, and here's the other thing. And people have written to me and said, well, Mel, what's going to happen you know, once you lose weight? Come on now. What, what's going to happen? We're always going to be a chubby girl in here. Do you think food addiction goes away because you go get gastric bypass surgery or you go get the sleeve or you go get anything? And, and I love my women who've done this. I do not judge any woman who does Monjero, Ozempic, who takes Contrave. You do what the hell you got to do to make not be hungry in the day, right? No one gets to judge your journey. If you want to have bariatric surgery, 
fuck it, do it. Like more power to you. Just not my cup of tea, right? Just not my thing. That's just not my thing. And But it, it might be your thing. Whatever you have to do to get through every day, do it, right? Do it. Whatever aids you need to do. I told y'all the other day, I'm thinking of going to get amphetamine. Not even lie to y'all because I struggle sometimes with being hungry. So that's it. So, you know, that's not a thing that, that's going to go away. So the thing that I saw in the feed today repeatedly was, I did so good all day. I broke down and I, or I broke my fast early. I broke my fast early and I failed. Like I, now my whole day is ruined. Not, 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 not. And I'm going to go back to what I did. And I, and again, you don't have to do what I do. Who the hell am I? I'm just Mel, the chubby Italian girl in North Carolina. But here's what you do. You have to focus on protein. Fuck the calories. I know this sounds like insanity to you, okay? I know what I'm saying to you is like this woman is cray cray. She probably needs to be admitted somewhere versus being allowed to be on TikTok. But I am telling you, you have to forget the whole entire calorie thing, okay? Because if you do what I'm saying you're to do, or I'm giving you the advice, right? I'm giving you the framework. If you focus on your protein, watch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you a fact that I, that I found. This is like, I wrote it down verbatim. I found this on the, I don't know what it's called. It's like the CDC or the people who told us about COVID, those people, you know, whoever those people are. They said, they said, if women over the age of 40, okay, if women over the age of 40 increase their protein by 15 to 30%, this is a study they did. They did a study with like, I don't know. I, don't make me make up a number. A lot of women. So they said, if you increase your protein 15 to 30%, 15 to 30% of the calories that you eat, that women uh, will eat 541 less calories in a day without restricting or counting anything. Did you hear what I said right there? Now, again, I'm going to take you, to, I'm going to have to say it twice because I don't think you heard me. Because if you heard me, there'd be 900 stars in the room, okay? The CDC, the people who talk about food. Remember the motherfuckers who told us about the food pyramid? Remember those people? Well, now they've come back and said, they've come back and said, if you increase your protein and you're over the age of 40 years old, right? And you increase your protein by 15 to 30%. This is why we're shooting for a hundred grams, right? And you're over the age of 40. You will start eating 550, 541 less calories a day without restricting food. Now, can I get a witness? Without restricting food, eat the lemon cake, damn it. Eat the lemon cake, like eat the lemon cake, screw it. Eat the lemon cake. Stop denying yourself. Stop denying yourself the very things. And that's what I said. You're like, everybody's like, Mel, what do you do? What do you do? Their videos are up there. They're in the thing. What do I do in the morning? I fast. I work overnight. So I do a 14, 10 fast. I do not set myself up for failure. I stop about three hours, two hours before I go into work. I, I do not eat during work. I go to bed. When I wake up from bed, it's been 14 hours because I know my chubby ass is going to be hungry. I get in my car. I grab this stuff that tastes like dog crap. Like, just keep it real. I hate protein. I hate protein. I'm going to get a t-shirt made on my website on the Etsy that says, I hate protein or protein tastes like my ex-husband's and there's going to be an eggplant because I'm telling you. I don't like this stuff. I don't like this stuff. I don't like this stuff. But I figured out a way to be able to drink it and actually like it, right? Because I, I I did all those shakes. I've done Slim Fast. I did Bill Fast. I did Lose Weight. I drank like pond water. You know what I mean? Like you name it. I, I drank it, did it, and I didn't lose weight. I remember like holding my nose and drinking that shit and being like, please, Jesus, like take me because I can't do this, right? And so uh, some people love it. You're a lucky person. I wish I loved protein, right? And just like someone likes my husband's ex-husband's eggplant, I don't like that anymore myself either. So I get up in the morning, I get in the car, and this is what I was doing every day. I've done this every day for like 10 years. I get in my car and I, I tell my daughter, if she's here, anybody wanna go for a ride? And one of them, or my other one, my oldest is here, my youngest is here right now, my middle one is down in um, 
Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, sorry. You're about to be muted, my friend. We are not talking about Herbalife in here. Sorry. That is one thing we are not doing. You got to go, love. So have a nice night. Uh, moderator, you see any of those words come up in this room? They got to go. Like, we're not talking. Nope, nope. We're not doing that shit. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I've given enough money to folks like that. So um, we're not doing no MLMs in here. Thank you, love. But anyway, as I was saying, so I get up in the morning. First thing I do, I lied. First thing I do is I drink an entire bottle of water and I take a probiotic. Again, this probiotic, Mel, this is not, it doesn't matter what probiotic you take. As long as it's a probiotic with a digestive enzyme. This is a probiotic with a digestive enzyme. No, not all probiotics are created the same. You need a digestive enzyme. Google it. Women over the age of 40 need a digestive enzyme. Okay? You don't worry about this one. There's another one. Go up to my go up to my Amazon storefront and you will see I've got another one on there that I actually ordered myself because you can't get this one anywhere. You can't get this one anywhere. So I'm not even going to show it to you. The one that's up there, I did another video about it because the other day I did the leg work. I called my girlfriend who's a PA. I called my doctor and I said, what do you think about this? And they said, it's one of the best, one of the best out there. So I said, okay. So I take that. I only take one to two. Okay. I'll tell you the story real quick. Those of you who have heard it. When I started this out, I was like, mm, I'm really chubby take three. Okay. But mind you, I didn't use the bathroom, but every four days, but okay. Yeah, I'll take three. All right. So I took three. All right. And then the next day I took three more. And then the next day I woke up and I took three more. And then the next day, Mount St. Helens erupted and I spent 12 hours in the bathroom. And then I called Teladoc crying and I said, I think there's things coming out of my booty that don't belong there. Have you ever seen that movie Predator? It was like Predator was in my booty. And I was like, uh, I ate too many probiotics and I couldn't stop it. I literally could not stop it. It was like, they, it was bad, right? And I was in there crying. I told my daughter, I think I'm dying. I think I'm going to die. Is that how people die? Like, does it come out of their butt? Like, I was crying. Like, it was bad. And so, I did that for 24 hours and then I realized, well, you know, you do everything in moderation. So I do one to two, depending on what I, like if I ate a lot the day before, I might do two. If my system's going slow, I might do two. If I am like going pretty good, I might do only one. It just kind of depends on the vibe, right? Like, you know your body. I don't know your body. Even if I was a doctor, who the hell's a doctor? I mean, they just have a doctor. Like they went to school, right? But they don't know your body. They don't know shit about your body. And every person's an individual. So kind of like what doctors do is they guess. They say, well, there's a group of people that we think might fit into this norm right here, into this box. But if you're out here, then you don't fit into the box. Guess what? So you do what's good for you, right? You do what's good for you. So then I get in my car and I drive to Starbucks and they know me by name. They're like, hey, Mel. I'm like, hey, can I get a quad shot over ice? And I get it in my cup and they fill it up to right here. And then I go ahead and I take my little protein drink and I pour it in there right at the thing, right in front of these people. They kind of laugh at me every day. The girl said to me the other day, she said, you know, Mel, I said, what? She said, you got some balls. I said, why? Because I reach in the back seat. Watch, I'm in Starbucks line right there. I'm not even driving forward yet. I paid $6 for my, my, my daughter's coffee, so I'll be damned. I put my protein shake in there and I'm gonna put my skinny syrup in there, right? I put my skinny syrup in there right in front of them because guess what, Starbucks? I hope you hear me say this and I hope you hear the revolution. We like to drink your coffee sometimes, but you don't have any sugar-free choices. Dunkin' Donuts got every kind of sugar-free choice in the world, but you know what? I guess Starbucks only want the skinny girl money or people that are not diabetic or people who can't have sugar. We only get, we only get sugar-free vanilla. Screw us, right? Because, you know, anyway. So I pour that right in the thing. I tell them, have a nice day, barista, and I drive on. And I go like this and I go, zh, 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 and I drink this. And if I'm hungry, if I'm hungry, I might eat some egg bites. I might go home and make some eggs and put some Verde on them. Or I might, my daughter, I got these protein pancakes. I'm going to show them to y'all tomorrow. Protein pancakes. They're a phenomenal at all these. They got chocolate chips in them. And that's it. That's it. They're amazing. So you get yourself something protein, right? So, and people are like, I can't do this, Mel. Protein is a lot. It's a lifestyle change. You will get it. You will figure it out. I promise you, right? Everything in the day that I used to put regular milk in, I use Fairlife now. Why do I use Fairlife? This one has 30 grams of carbs. I mean, oh, shoot. I said the wrong word. Sinner, sinner, chicken dinner. This has 30 grams of protein, right? Their milk 
has 16 grams of protein. So here's the thing. Hi, Kiki. Why would you, why would you put in, why would you put in regular milk that only has like four or five grams of protein when you can use something that's got like 15, 16? Think outside the box, right? I make the best Alfredo ever and I use protein. Oh, you're not a moderator, Kiki? Okay, sorry. Totally tea leaf. That's my child, by the way, down there. You are a moderator, babe. You're like taking me off my juju. You are a moderator. Just click on someone's name and, and you should be good to go. You're a moderator, babe. Um, that's my baby down there, Totally Tea Leaf. If you want to follow her, that's her art on the wall. She's a very talented artist and she's kind of cool because she's mine, you know, that part. Sorry, Keek. I do shameless plugs about you all the time. My people like you, Kiki. They like Fran and they like you. They haven't met your sisters yet. Um, but anyway, um, so it's, you're saying you tried. Okay, hold on a second. All right, so y'all, as I was saying, um, manage a moderator. Um, pin comments, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm just going to remove you, and then I'm going to make you a moderator again because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So it happens when old people try to do things like this, right? Manage, add moderator. Confirm. Confirm. Gotcha, totally, tea leaf. You should be good, Keek. All right, so as I was saying, as I was saying, I gag protein too. Okay, let me give you a couple things really quick. I gag protein too. Protein in your coffee, espresso, added skinny syrup. Skinny syrups are life. They have nothing in them. There's nothing in them. And you, what kind of skinny, uh, my friend, I have every kind of skinny syrup. I have every, like I have glazed donut. I have hazelnut. I have, you name it. You can get them at for three but y'all, I'm not even making this shit up. If you want to drink alcohol, this is actually a skinny girl mojito. You can just add some rum to it or some freaking, it says right on the front. I think it says add rum. Yep, just add rum right there. Just add rum. If I get get my nails done, sorry. Um, been too busy taking care of y'all to take care of my nails. But anyway, um, see, look at $3.99. That's it at Marshall's. You can get it at Marshall's. You can get it at Home Goods. You can get it at um, TJ Maxx. $3.99 for all this syrup. I put it in everything. I put it in my cheesecake. I bake with it. There's a simple syrup. Like, love it. Absolutely love it. Love it. And then there's no calories. So, this and a little bit of rum. Come on now, sister. Come on. Friday night. So, anyway. Um, that's one way I get my protein, right? So I put it in my coffee. If you're not a coffee drinker, so you're probably like, Mel, I don't like coffee. You know what my daughter does? She takes it and she freezes her protein. She freezes her protein in an ice tray and she gets the vanilla and she puts it in her blender in the morning and then she adds an entire thing of yogurt. So now she's at like 30 plus like 16, so she's already at 46, right? 46 grams, so that's half for the day. And she puts fresh fruit in there and she adds a little, we got some raspberry, raspberry is really good in sweet tea, but you don't, you make unsweetened tea and add it and you have raspberry tea. She adds that and she eats a protein bowl or she makes it into a smoothie. Easy way to get your protein, don't overthink it. Then as I said, I eat one meal a day that I want. Okay, and I, I eat other meals. Let me clarify that. I have a 10 hour window to eat. I break my fast with protein coffee. Okay, so this is so healthy to start, healthy to end, whatever the I want in the middle. You hear that? Healthy to start with, healthy to end, whatever the you want in the middle. Okay, whatever the you want in the middle. So I might go to Red Robin. I really like their turkey burgers. Might get a turkey burger and french fries. It's, here's the thing. That meal that you eat whatever you want that day, this is how you set yourself up for success. You know why? Let me tell you a secret. Your body's really smart. But kind of smarter than you are, just to keep it 100, my friend. And your body picks it up. Oh, okay, so this bitch thinks she's cute. So she going to like every day at this time, she's going to not eat. And then she's going to start eating every day at this time. So guess what? We're going to hold that on. We're going to go into starvation mode. We're going to, and then you know what you do? You feed your body and it's going to feel really, really, really uncomfortable. Because the first week I was doing this, I ate more food in that week than I ate the year before. Can I get a witness? If you are doing this, you probably feel like you are eating so much food. You're like probably eating it like 
Drinking your protein. This bitch is crazy. She crazy. Like I have eaten so much food today because we are conditioned to starve ourselves. We are conditioned to deprive ourselves. Who? When the hell have you been able to go? I'm gonna just eat Mexican. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have a fajita today. And guess what? I'm gonna have the damn tortilla. If you want the low carb tortilla, that is fine. No one's gonna talk shit about you. That just means you're gonna cut weight probably a little faster than some of us. But you know what? Guess what? We're not worried about the number. We're worried about how we feel. We're learning about we're worried about changing a lifestyle change for the rest of our life. So one meal a day, right? Like you go out to lunch with your girlfriends, you know? You want to have a piece of pizza? Have a damn piece of pizza. You want two pieces of pizza? Have two damn pieces of pizza. You know what I'm saying? Fuck the carbs, fuck the calories. Don't worry about it. I know this sounds like a crazy concept, but guess what? I've said this night after night, if you've heard me every night for a week, the true sign of insanity is to continue to do the same behavior and expect a different outcome. So my people um, in the group, they're like, well, I've been counting carbs for a year. How much weight have you lost, my friend? Um, Eight pounds. Okay, so you've been doing that. So why don't you try this for just a second? For just a second, you just worry about protein. Protein, protein, protein. Protein, protein, protein. Protein, protein, protein. Protein, protein, protein. P to the R to the O to the T to the E to the I to the N, protein, okay? You worry about protein. That's what you're focusing on. I'm focusing on protein, picking foods that are high in protein, and that one meal in the middle, I mean, whatever the hell I want to. Now, what? I, now listen, do not come back to me two weeks from now and be like, well, Mel, every day I go through McDonald's and I get myself a Big Mac and then I ride over to a Burger King and I get a Whopper Junior with extra onion rings and extra mayonnaise and I drink two Cokes and then I go ahead and have a double order of fries. I don't know why I'm not losing weight. Come on now. You did not get over 40 years old to even bring that to me. Like, come on now. That, that's that. When I say eat a meal that you like, that's like a normal meal, right? But something that you want, something that tastes good to you, something that you don't have to eat freaking broccoli. You don't have to eat just vegetables. You don't have to have a salad with no salad dressing. You can have whatever the hell you want to because guess what? The rest of the day, you're, if you never fasted before, I don't think you get it. And if you don't get it, it's okay. Go to Google and look up how does fasting benefit a woman over the age of 40 and you will be mind blowing. You will be mind blowing. You'll sit there and be like, what the hell? Why didn't someone tell me this a long time ago? Like literally, what the hell? So then you have that one meal in the day and guess what you're doing throughout the day? You're moving your body. What? I'm going to Target, right? I'm going to Target. You're going to Target and guess what? If you go to Target, and instead of parking right up next to the handicap parking, carry your ass to the back of the parking lot, right? If you live in Michigan, my friends in Michigan or Ohio or up in Boston, y'all got snow right now. So what you need to do is go on your little telephone and look up YouTube. Look up YouTube. You look up YouTube and you say, walk away the pounds. Walk away the pounds. And then you cast it to your TV set. And if you're really fancy, you have a smart TV. So if you have a smart TV, hi, what do you want? If you have a smart TV, then I'm almost done. If you have a smart, okay, if you have a smart TV, then what you can do is you can just watch it on your TV and you walk away the pounds. You can put Madonna on, you can put Aerosmith on, you can put Kiki, look, Kiki's going to see Taylor Swift. She loves Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift on, play whatever music you want to. And guess what? Get up and move yourself around and do your steps, get your steps in or... There's someone on, on, on um, Facebook I love called the Dance Marshal or the Marshal Dance or something. It's like this one um, man and there's two women on the back and they do these dances. Like they dance to shivers. Like they have all these dance. I can't even do the dance steps, but I just get my big ass up and move. And if you never move, try this little trick. Hey, Siri, you say, set an alarm for five minutes. And literally for five minutes, get up and walk around your house. I don't care if you've had surgery, if you don't feel good, if you don't get up and use it now, you're going to lose it. If you don't, uh, my Facebook page is in the link in my bio. If you do not get up now and you do not move, you're, you're gonna lose it. Osteoporosis is gonna break your bones like, ching, you're gonna be like this. You're gonna be walking down the road one day, here's osteoporosis, I'm 61 years old, bing, 
and there goes your bones. So use them now or you will lose them, right? Use them now or you will lose them. And I can say that again. Do not get up and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to join the chubby girl challenge. I am going to walk to Japan today. You cannot go from laying in your bed for five years to walking to Japan and think you're setting yourself up for sex, up for success. This is all lifestyle behavior changes, right? Little things at a time. No one expects you to go out and run a marathon tomorrow. But what I do expect you to do is start taking care of yourself, right? And start moving, walking around. Any kind of activity that you like to do, do it, okay? What do I do? I walk. I can't do crap else. I have a hurt back. So that's what I do. I just go and walk 30 minutes a day. Thank you, Tracy. Amen, sister. That's exactly it. Get up and move your ass. That's it. That's it, right? And so once you do that, now it's time to go to bed, right? Um, yeah, I weighed in this morning. Uh, I'm on uh, week eight and I've lost 30 pounds so far. Um, so I'm exactly at the zero... 300 marker and like I keep like I'm twitching to get if I see that too on the scale I promise you I'm like my kids are like mom don't record it like that's embarrassing it's not embarrassing like when I see the two and I don't weigh in for every two weeks but when I weigh in I just happen to weigh in today when I weigh in in two weeks <laughs> let there be a two on there shit like I'm gonna be screaming from the top of my house um so do not tell me to wrap it up I'm talking to my people go to bed I, why do I have to go to bed I don't have to work tonight Oh, that's hilarious. You're right. Goodbye. Thank you. We're talking. Come on. This is what happens when you're hanging out with your girlfriends and your children come in. You're like, damn, little Billy. Take your ass to bed. We're doing grown-up things in here, right? She's a grown-up, but you know what I'm saying. Like, you know that how you do that. You got to send the kids, like, to bed, right? Um, anyway, so now it's time to go to bed, right? Now it's time to go to bed. Now we're getting ready to go to bed. What are you going to do? You're going to take magnesium. Magnesium glyconate. That's what it's called. Magnesium glycanate. Did, <laughs> let me tell you all a little secret. I've said this before. I don't give a shit. I'll keep saying this again. I know y'all are going to get sick of hearing my story. And it is okay, right? It is okay. When I had my gallbladder checking out 15 years ago, no one said that to me. They gave me some oxycodone. They gave me some really good pain medication and sent me home. But nobody said, hey, by the way, B word, you need to be taking magnesium glyconate because you don't got a gallbladder. No one said that to me. No one said, hey, hey, Mel, hey, hey Mel, by the way, um, that, that magnesium is used in like 30 some different enzymes in your heart in your heart, right? And so let me give you an analogy that will make sense to you beautiful ladies out there, right? You know when you cook dinner and dinner is really good and everything's really good and someone's like, mm, it just needs a little salt. Do you know what I'm talking about? It just needs a little salt. This is the salt, right? This is the salt. Everything in your body, it says right here on the back, you read on the back, it says supports muscle relaxation and restful sleep. It makes you tired. After about a week, this makes you feel like when your parents used to tell you you had to take a nap, and you're like, I ain't taking a nap. You can't make me take a nap. <sighs> right? This is what this does, right? So about 30 minutes before you, you can find magnesium glyconate. Please just look it up anywhere. Look up the words. Go on my page. It's available on Amazon right now. I've got one on there. This right here is a um, enough for 60 days. Um, you can find it, go to Walmart, go to, they've got it everywhere. Okay. You don't have to do this brand. You can do any, which dosage that's, I'm not a doctor. I'm sorry, my love. And I don't mean to say that like a jerk, but I'm really not a doctor. What the dosage it says on here that you're supposed to take, right? Two tablets twice a day is recommended. However, ask a physician. I take two at bed. Okay. I take two in bed and I go to sleep like about 30 minutes before bed. And it helps your enzymes move. I'm going to tell you all a secret. This is I'm going to take you to church on this one. I've been on blood pressure medicine for 14 years. I don't take blood pressure medicine anymore. When I went to my new doctor and he said, no one ever told you that um, magnesium glyconate helps with your blood pressure. Like, what? No. No, they didn't tell me that. They had me on like 15 blood pressure medicines and some freaking water pills. And my ankles were swelling. And I'm like, what the actual fuck? Like, excuse my French, but like, what the actual WTF is going on here in the world? Like, we give birth to you doctors. We like, we are the women of this, you know, that we made the flag. Betsy Ross sat there and did the flag. And we did all this shit in the world. And you can't even tell us about probiotics or you can't tell us about magnesium. Like, someone please. And the thing that makes me know that I made the right decision is I have doctors and nurses and people in the medical field going, 
I don't know why didn't anyone tell you that, but like I've been taking a probiotic for years. Doctor is writing to me saying every person, every person over the age of 40 should be on a digestive enzyme because of the crap we put in our body, right? Like because of the crap. If you're not pooping twice a day, you ain't doing it right, they said. That's what my doctor said. And I said, when did that happen? Like it used to be once a day, but what's going on here? But that they don't tell us this, right? Because as you get old, as you are chubby, as you are overweight, this is an industry. This is a $15 billion a year industry. So if they keep you unhealthy, then you're going to have to go in and spend money, right? I don't care what they say about wanting us to be healthy, but let's keep it 100. Then why didn't someone tell me about this until I was 52 years old? Come on now, all these years, I don't have hot flashes anymore. I'm sleeping through the night. I don't have, I don't have um, restless leg syndrome. It's like, what? Like I have a back injury. Like this is nuts. This is like last time I went to the doctor before this doctor, I said, I can't sleep at night. He's like, I can give you Xanax. I was like, no, I do not want your Xanax, my friend. Like I want to go to sleep. Well, then maybe you should be on this psych medication. Oh, you have PTSD. Well, maybe you should be on this medication. No. Why didn't you tell me to go buy a $20 of magnesium glyconate, something that's already in my body and that I was lacking. And then my doctor ran the numbers. Oh, look at my silvers. They're so cute. Um, then the doctor ran my numbers. Not only was I like magnesium deficient i was like negative ghost rider like i was like like if this was like this was like the magnesium scale right this is the magne I was like this is the magnesium scale up here i'm way down here like this is me i'm looking up at magnesium like i ain't got no magnesium in my body like my, ma my magnesium level is like a uh a, 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 you know no, no, no. And so um, I said all that to say this, okay? So we're going to do that. We're going to do our fast. We're going to move our body. If you want to join the Skinny Girl Challenge, you're more than welcome to. Um, I'm about to take us out here in a couple minutes. We're not done yet because I got to take you to the church part, right? We got to do the motivational part, okay? Because hmm. not only are we going to do all that, what else are we going to do, Mel? For the next week, we're going to do what we call lifestyle change, okay? I want you to take your focus off the scale. I can say that again. I want you to take your focus off the scale. I want you to download, if you have it, the My360 scan. Scan your body and have a realistic measurement of yourself. And you can scan yourself once a week because you'll find you look like a shrinky dink, and you shrink on that app. And it makes you feel good to see even just a couple inches go away, right? You're going to focus on protein. You're going to focus on protein. And here are my little, these are my little, my little like ghetto, I guess you call them. These are my little, um, I didn't have anything to write on, but these are my, um, my cards that I'm going to show up. And the rest of the week, because I'm not supposed to be saying these words, we're going to say, I'll see that word. Watch. See that word? Y'all see that word? Write that. See that word? What? See that word? See that word? Together, right? F the scale. 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 I'm going to say it again. F the scale! Okay, I'm, the, I'm yelling it to you all the way out in Ohio to my girlfriends in Ohio. Sister, F the scale. My sister that's out there counting her carbs and worrying about her calories. F the carbs. F the carbs. F the calories. F the calories. F the calories! Focus on protein. If you focus on protein, you move your body and drink 100 ounces of water a day, come back in a week and tell me you didn't lose anything. Come back in a week and tell me you don't feel 1,000% better. Please come back and do that because then you didn't really do what we're talking about. This is not about punishing yourself. Eat the lemon cake. Go If you're driving in Starbucks in the morning and you're going to break your fast and you're like about to drink your protein and you see that little lemon cake and it's calling your name, it's like, Hey, Mel. Mel, I really want you to eat me. I'm a lemon cake. Damn it. Order the freaking lemon cake and eat that shit with a smile on your face and a song in your heart. And then when you have your meal that day, then maybe you'll just have a salad for your, you know, the big meal that you get to pick, you know, maybe have something a little healthier versus like, you know, going and having a cheeseburger or having something like that. It's all about you. It's all about your lifestyle, right? And your choices. It's not about forgiving yourself. That's the one thing I saw people repeatedly saying. It's okay. Forgive yourself. Fuck that. Grant yourself some grace. Grant yourself some grace. Hear that word, grace. That is the word that you're going to focus on this week. What am I going to do this week, Mel? I'm going to grant myself some grace. 
I'm going to stop the negative thinking. I'm going to get off this live. This is my commitment that I want from everybody in this room. This is where I need a heart in the room. What I want you to do when you get off this live tonight, when your kids are in bed, when there's nobody in the house, when you're by yourself, I want you to walk in the room and I want you to look in the mirror. And this is where I get emotional. I'm sorry and I apologize. I want you to look at yourself. I want you to really look at yourself. For just a minute, don't even say anything. Just sit there and look at yourself in the mirror. Not with any misconceptions or judgment. Kiki, come let Fran out. Not with any, like, anything like that. Just look in the mirror. And then I want you to tell yourself, I'm sorry. I really want you to look in the mirror and tell yourself, I am sorry. I am sorry for buying into diet culture. I'm sorry for starving you. I am sorry for making you feel like you're not worthy because of a scale. I am sorry, Mel, for not treating you like the queen that you are, right? Fran is my teacup Yorkie. I am sorry for the things I've done wrong to you. And you're looking in the mirror saying this. And then I want you to say, because I'm worth it. Because I am worth it. You know what? I am sorry, but I am worth it. Today, I am worth it. I am strong. I am strong and I will not overthink anymore. And every time that little voice starts in your head that tells you you're not shit, every time that little voice in your head starts to tell you you're not it because you're not 105 pounds or tells you that this or that, you tell it, fuck off, get out of here voice and you put it away. And then I want you to go back in the mirror and you look at it and you say to yourself, I'm worth it. No one is ever going to tell me again, I'm not worth it. No one ever going to tell me that I don't deserve a probiotic. No one's going to ever tell me that I don't deserve magnesium so I can sleep at night. No one's ever going to tell me that I can't eat what I want once a day. No one's ever going to control me again. I'm going to control me, right? And so if you find it in your heart, I, I just want to say thank you again, right? I want to go there first. Thank you for spending your life minutes with me. Thank you for those of you who joined the group. If you don't have Facebook and you haven't joined the group, it is okay. Those of you who bought swag for my daughter, um, the Chubby Girl Challenge and Nobody Better Than You, y'all are like literally some of the real MVPs in my life. Thank you so much. Those of you who bought the Amazon products through my storefront, I, I appreciate it, y'all. You know, you can buy it anywhere you want to, um, ever, our first ever. Um, it's like a meeting. It's like a town hall meeting. I don't know what the hell that even looks like, but we're going to do it. Um, the Facebook group is also in my link tree up at the top. Um, if you see her in here, her name's totally tea leaf. If you got a second, if you could follow my daughter, she's trying to get her art out there. That'd be really sweet of you. Totally tea leaf. Totally say something in the room, please. So the people can see who you are. See all these women in this room. If you're looking for friends on TikTok. These are your people. We are chubby, we're over 40, and we're real. We're, we're, not, we're not fake, you know, we're not fake, we're not fake. The swag is up in the Etsy store that Kiki's got up there. We're not fake. You want real women who are gonna stand behind you, who are gonna lift you up, who's gonna, who are gonna literally be there like, like it was back in high school, like in junior high, like your crew. This is your crew. I found my people. I'm 52 years old and I found my people. And damn it, one day I'm going to drive across this country. I'm going to rent a minivan. I told Kiki, I'm just going to drive across the country and go to lunch with group, groups of women just so I can meet groups of people. Screw it, you know. And again, you know, happy Woman's Day. Happy Woman's Day. Celebrate the fact that you're a woman. And when you leave here today, you remember one thing. Who knows? What do you remember when you leave here? I'm going to wait to see who can put it up in the room. First person to call it out. Who is it? What, what are you going to do? What do we know? Nobody what? Nobody what? I'm looking for it. Who's got it? I'm waiting for someone to type it out. Nobody's better than who? Who's nobody better than? Nobody's better than you. Nobody is better than you. Fuck the scale. Nobody's better than you. That's it. Fuck the scale. F the scale. Nobody is better than you. That's it. There is no other you. And you remember that as you walk through your day. Okay? Thank you for spending Wednesday night with me. Thank you for being you and bestie. We got this. <laughs> I think we figured it out. And together, we're going to figure it out and knock it out the park. So y'all have a blessed night and thank you. Love, hugs, and kisses and all that good stuff. Fran didn't make an appearance tonight. Y'all have a good one. Bye.